Okay, these are my disclosures. Um, the one that's relevant for this talk is that my centre had a collaborative research agreement with um, Celgene and Bluebird Bio. So as you've heard from um, Steve, the results of CAR T cells um, targeting CD19, particularly in ALL, are extremely encouraging. So what I'm going to do in this talk is discuss other targets in haematologic malignancies, other targets in B-cell malignancies, as well as T-cell and myeloid disease. So for those of you who came in late, this is our version of the slide about chimeric antigen receptors, which juxtapose the antigen recognition domain of a monoclonal antibody with signal transduction mechanisms of T-cells, such that when this artificial receptor is transferred to a T-cell, it acquires specificity for tumour antigens and hopefully results in destruction of the tumour cell. And as Steve pointed out, there are several generations of cars that have different numbers of co-stimulatory moieties. Now CD19, as you heard in Steve's talk, is an excellent target um, for immunotherapy because it's expressed from the early um, B lymphocyte precursor stage through to um, minimal expression on plasma cells. But there are other potential B cell antigens that also have um, expression on most B cell malignancies and um, CD20 and 22 are potential targets. Then there are other antigens with more restricted expression on plasma cell malignancies that may also be valid targets. So if you look at the number of trials um, targeting antigens other than CD19 and B-cell, ALL, NHL and CLL, they're listed here. There are studies targeting BCMA, CD20, CD22, ROR1 and CLL and Seattle and Kappa, and many other antigens being evaluated in preclinical studies. So as you heard in the last talk, loss of CD19 expression after CD19 CAR T cell therapy can be um, a cause of relapse after successful therapy with CD19 CARs. So the options in such patients that are target alternate antigens, and there's been one published trial so far of CD22 CARs from Terry Fry and the group at the NCI. And this um, trial was reported in updated ASH last year, and at that stage they reported nine subjects, and these were all high-risk patients. Seven had all relapsed after um, CD19 CAR T cell therapy, and six of those had a CD19 negative um, escape. And in this study, four of the nine available subjects attained a complete um, marrow remission, all of which were MRD negative. And of note, all the three subjects treated at the second dose level had sustained remission at the time that this ASH abstract was presented. However, there have also been some CD22 negative relapses. So I think the future directions in this area are to perhaps target multiple antigens, and there are several combinations, all of which involve CD19 um, with CD22 or 20, or indeed all three antigens. Now I know a number of groups are developing such trials. The only one I could actually find on clinicaltrials.gov so far though is from the Medical College of Wisconsin targeting CD19 and CD20. The other um, side effect of um, a CD19 cars is that they can cause B-cell aplasia. And there are some other more restricted antigens that may potentially leave B-cell subpopulations intact. And um, Carlos Ramos and Pietro Dotti and our group um, focused on the Kappa um, light chain because malignancies are monoclonal expressing either Kappa or Lambda and targeting one of these should leave the other reciprocal population intact so there'll be some preservation of normal B cells. And this study was reported um, in JCI last year, and I'm just going to show one patient who was a follicular lymphoma transformed to diffuse large B-cell lymphoma in his fifth relapse. You can see he had residual disease prior to receiving the Kappa cars, and six weeks after his second infusion was in remission, and he remains in remission at four years without any further therapy. 
The overall response rate in the first nine patients in this study who didn't receive lymphodepletion was 33%, which is obviously lower than reported with the CD19 cars with lymphodepletion, but the study is continuing with lymphodepletion added. In myeloma, a number of um, potential targets have been evaluated in the clinic, NKGD2 at Dana Farber and BCMA at several sites, and there's also a number of other um, potential targets being evaluated preclinically. So the NCI reported the first study of CARS targeting BCMA, and this report in blood last year from Jim Cockendurfer's group used a retroviral vector with a CD28 co-stimulatory moiety, and they reported no side effects and minimal activity on the first two dose levels, but on the higher dose levels they started to see responses as seen here. And this approach has been translated um, by Bluebird Bio to a multi-center study where they're using a lentiviral vector that um, uses the 41BB co-stimulatory moiety. And this is data reported in an abstract by Dr. Lin from Mayo at the EOTRC conference in December. And of note, um, if you look at the different dose levels, at the lower dose level, the response rate was only 33%, but it increased to 100% at the two higher dose levels, and some stringent complete responses were seen, which I think is encouraging data, albeit on a small number of patients so far. Now, in Hodgkin's lymphoma, because of the success of brentuximab, CD30 is an obvious target that's being evaluated in the clinic. There's also preclinical studies um, from Sargill looking at CD123, which is expressed on both Reed Sternberg cells and also on tumour associated macrophages. So CD30 is obviously, um, like many of the B cell targets, a target that's validated by the activity of the corresponding antibody. And in the Baylor trial run by Barbara Savoldo and Carlos Ramos, we saw an overall response rate of 33%, but an additional 33% who had stable disease in some cases for a continued period. And this study is also continuing with lymphodepletion. Barbara, um, with the group at UNC, has initiated a new study after autograft, and Jim Cockendorf is developing an NCI study with a humanized CD30. And this just shows one of the responses in our study. This is a patient with ALCL, and you can see residual disease pre-infusion that had resolved by six weeks post-infusion. Now, in extending CAR T-cell therapy to T-cell and myeloid targets, the problem is that all the antigens that have been identified as potential targets in both these cell populations are also expressed on normal myeloid or normal T-cells. And that's obviously also the case with CD19, but you can um, survive long term with um, B cell aplasia if you're receiving immunoglobulin. It's a little bit more challenging with myeloid or T cell aplasia. So there are several potential mitigation strategies that are being employed. The first is to use CAR T cells um, targeting these malignancies as a bridge to transplant. This means logistically that you need to identify a potential allogeneic donor prior to administering the CAR T cells, and you also need to make sure you eradicate all your CAR T cells with conditioning because you don't want them persisting post-transplant. A second strategy is to incorporate a suicide gene, um, such as an inducible caspase 9, so you can eradicate the CAR T cells after they've had a period in which to um, um, have their anti-tumor activity. Um, people have evaluated transient CAR expression um, with mRNA or non-integrating vectors. And another approach would be to have an activation switch so you could turn on and turn off expression of the, um, of the CAR-T. Another potential mitigation strategy is to render the normal cells resistant to the CAR by gene editing with CRISPR-Cas. And this has been reported in two abstracts at ASH. Sar Gill's group um, uh, used CD34 cells and then knocked out CD33, so these normal cells should then be resistant to a CD33 CAR that you would use to treat AML. 
and Max Mamenkin has used the same strategy with T cells to knock out CD7 to allow treatment of T cell lymphomas with a CD7 car. So to discuss how you might develop a CAR T-cell platform for the therapy of T-cell malignancies, this is obviously another major unmet need because patients with relapsed or refractory TALL and T-lymphoma um, have very poor um, options at present with a five-year overall survival of around 10 to 30 per cent. So there are several potential um, antigens expressed on T-cell ALL and, um, and T-cell lymphomas and the initial one that Max um, evaluated was CD5. And this shows that if um, you make um, CAR T cells, he used in this case a retroviral vector that had a CD28 co-stimulatory moiety. It could provide protection in a mouse xenograft model of ALL, so it could eradicate um, the TALL, and the mice who received the CAR T cells had prolonged survival. Importantly, it also had activity against primary TALL blasts, as shown here. So Max, along with Rain Rouse, are translating this approach to the clinic and have submitted an IND for a CD5 um, CAR T-cell trial, and this will be given in patients who have an identified allogeneic donor because of the risk of eradicating normal T-cells. In terms of myeloid malignancy, there are only actually two published trials that I could find. The first is from David Ritchie's group in Melbourne, where they treated four patients with relapsed AML with a CAR targeting the Lewis antigen. They saw limited CAR T cell expansion and persistence, but had two patients who had a transient reduction in disease, but they all eventually progressed. There's another case report from China um, where uh, one patient received um, T cells transduced with a CD33 car and again had a transient response. The current trials active in the US are two trials targeting CD123 at Penn and City of Hope. No data has been published from these trials as yet. And a trial at Dana Farber targeting NKGD2 which was presented in abstract form at ASH where they had no objective responses in the first six patients treated at lower dose levels with AML or MDS. There's a lot of preclinical um, targets being evaluated and obviously a lot of interest in trying to identify targets that are selectively expressed on leukemia as opposed to normal cells. So in conclusion, I think the studies you've heard earlier this morning show that second generation CD19 cars have very remarkable activities against B-cell malignancies, um, especially ALL, even when it's relapsed and refractory. Cars can, though, successfully travel beyond CD19, um, with results published um, targeting CD22, Kappa, and BCMA, and even beyond B-cells to CD30. An extension to myeloid and T-cell disease is obviously a major goal, but it requires a strategy to mitigate effects on normal progenitors. And I'd obviously like to acknowledge all the people in my centre too who are involved in the studies from our centre that I've presented. Thank you.